Hey guys, StarCraft here, and today I'm going to review something I didn't think I was going to review. I, aside from Young Justice number three, which I will get to probably on Monday, because I think I'm starting to leave the weekday. At least a lot of these I'm getting a lot of reviews, so why not get that one out of the way too? But anyway, I pretty much wrote off most of the Wonder and Wonder comics. I may review Naomi after it finishes. I'm not reviewing Wonder Twins, even though I am buying it, but. Let's talk about a certain property of DC that's always been interesting, even though it's been ripped off later on and to the point where people have forgotten about the original. Let's talk about Dial H for Hero, where a, basically the notion of a person gets this little thing, a dial or a phone dial or whatever, that you either type, either dial the H or you actually spell H-E-R-O, which would be um, 4376. And you turn into a hero, getting all sorts of abilities. And, well, that's what we're going to be talking about here today. This one by Sam Humphreys and Joe Quirinos. Qu Qu we're based off of some of the concept by Brian Michael Bendis. Now, the last time DC was doing Dial H, it was with New 52 with this much more vertical-esque. Which helps out that Karen Berger was the initial, um, um, the initial editor on it. And you have Brian Bowen artwork, and it's done by China Meville, who's known for doing this type of stuff. And the last time, it got pretty dark and really creepy. But this one, let's see if Sam Humphreys can actually do something. Because I gotta say, spoiler alert, I like this. Probably the best of the Wonder comics so far. Or, uh, yeah, and it's matching in the idea of being a kid, but it still fits in the DC universe. You actually get a liking for um, the main character here, and yeah, let's just dive right in, shall we? Let's start with the cover. I like it. It's basically showing our main character with the human influence a girl will meet in the comic on the left, and his heroic influence, Superman, of course, on the right. As he's about ready to, well, dial H. It's nice, and I like, um... Joe Quinnison's art. It's that kind of... I mean, it, and it all happens also in the coloring, yes. And I think he usually does his own coloring. But it's even when you don't take away the coloring, it's very good, simple artwork that's... Well, it's just nice. It war looks good, looks nice. We, didn't, we open up with both a message to Superman and reminding him of something that happened 10 years ago where a young boy, Mag Miguel almost died after he tried to do a double backflip off the high dive and smacked his head on the way down. Blacked out, sank like a stone. And as his vision was going dark, he heard someone say, dial 911. Next thing he knows, when he wakes up, he's, and Superman's flying with him, carrying him off. And he, I like the little joke. Don't worry, I haven't dropped anyone yet. That's my little joke. Why did I can see Superman doing that just to be playful? And basically, he mentioned how his x-ray vision showed nothing scary, but he was taking him to the hospital just in case. Miguel, he just feels like he's feeling this rush. He felt like he was, he, li he lived, and after the day, he just wanted to feel that rush again. And, well, he kept doing everything he can. He basically became a thrill junkie. Which, from what I hear from some people who have had near-death experiences... Sometimes happens. Sometimes they do want to feel that thrill again. If it was a case where they was near death due to something that was, yeah, pumped up and, you know, just full of adrenaline, <coughs> yeah. Then he one day says, my parents, well, you know that part too, apparently. Basically, his parents died and he was stuck with his uncle. And, and he was in Devil's Canyon, California. And, okay, one thing I love about Miguel is that, while it's clearly he's Hispanic, they... Don't emphasize it. Like at all. I mean, he's drawn that way, but it's not brought up at all. He just happens to be a guy named Miguel, who's most likely Hispanic. And, yeah. That's it. I'm really liking it so far. And he basically is um, running this truck that's the Mayo Madness. It has mayo sandwich, mayo fries, mayo soup, fried mayo on a stick, and mayo surprise. And... Yeah, what the heck? I, I I'm not from California, so I don't know if that thing's a real thing or not. But anyway, he meets up with this one girl who's yeah giving him a bit of shit, but he recognizes her as Summer, girl who keeps running away. 
And she laughs out thinking, I had no idea I was famous. So, and he even asks, you do it for the attention? Although she says she does it because she feels she's the only one with the guts enough to get out of that stupid town. And, well, basically, she asks, do you have anything to eat that's not mayo? And he gives her gives up her sandwich and gives up his sandwich to her. His uncle shows up and chews him out saying, clean out the mayo traps. And despite promise, you know, he did promise and uh, tell him that he could go be with his friend at the canyon. His uncle basically, <coughs> he's an asshole. Basically saying, I, and what I said was, I take you in after your parents and everything. But I ain't going to harbor a freeloader. Now shut up and get in there and do what I tell you. Jesus Christ almighty. Anyway, he mentions that, and he is able to make um into the canyon. And it looks like, from the looks of it, there's a ramp that's going to go over this gap in the canyon. It doesn't look too bad. Well, at least in one angle. In another angle, it looks a bit like there's a big gap. And he thinks he misses his mom and dad. As he looks at the, um, the ramp and feels it's the definition of sketchy. But everyone's looking at him. And... He even asked like, in his letter to man, did you ever feel like you could just leave this town? Then he also asked, did you ever, oh uh, yeah, did you hate where you grew up? Did you ever feel like you were going to explode? He then goes on his bike and he flips off. Uh-oh. As he's falling into the canyon. Be, and, but and, yeah, it would have been the death of him if he, all of a sudden, a red phone appears. Yep, it's the dial. As someone speaks on it, saying, Miguel, listen to me. If you want to live, you must dial H. Do it, Miguel. Dial H for a hero. And, well, not being an idiot, he grabs it and does just that. As all of a sudden, a phone booth appears. Just like the uh, image he remembers of Superman coming out of a phone booth. Again, I like it. <coughs> we didn't see a bunch of people feeling, um, getting these, um, the four, but with the, um, GHI on their foreheads. Damien, Lobo, um, uh, Snapper Car, don't know who these two are, uh, Harley and Alfred, but they're all sensing the dial has been reactivated. It's back. And then we see Miguel just going through this very trippy space as he's here, like he feels like when he fell off the diving, diving board. His ears are ringing, but he hears a voice. If you wish to escape, if you wish to be magnificent, if you wish to discover yourself, all you have to do is dial. And when he does, he comes out as Monster Truck. Wow. And we basically then get a bit of it, what looks like could be his origin. You see a bunch of trucks coming towards him. The Truck Triforce. Every thousand years, the Etern- and the Earth needs a new champion of trucking. And they have selected him. And you know, and that's when that's how he, this guy's origin was. Whichever this hero he's tapping into. Truck yeah! I just love that. It's very life out looking. <coughs> and he says diesels in his veins, rumble in his mufflers, Satan for the vengeance. <laughs> if this is his only appearance, it's already telling us all we need to know about this monster truck hero. And he starts just slamming into a bunch of cars and trucks, just feeling all of this rush. Hasta la vista, cars. 18 wheels, awesome. And then it wears off as he wakes up in the middle of a car, on a car lot. All the cars smashed. And yeah, all of a sudden someone is uh, is off saying like, whoever there, oh, the cops, come out peacefully. And please do not set off any more bombs or whatever the hell you did. He's freaking out as he's running. All of a sudden, the mail truck pulls up. And he thinks it's his uncle, but nope. It's Summer, who picks him up and... Gee, you bet she stole it as they drive off. As he's at, and she asks, what, And how the hell did you get the police to come after you like that? And what is that thing in your lap? Which is the uh, the dial, as it appears, ringing. He answers it, and he listens to someone named the, uh, and the operator. Calling from a place called the Heroverse. And he needs Miguel's help. He, um, the device he's holding is very dangerous, and he must protect it from the agents of the Thunderbolt Club. For if they get, in, uh, and if they, they will go to any lengths to get their hands on it, even if that means Miguel's death. And yeah, that's the end of the first issue. And I like it. I really like it. Miguel feels like a good character, and all this stuff 
I mean, it's giving us questions, but you're setting up enough stuff just to give us off the bat so we at least know what we're getting into. And Summer's an interesting character. I like how Superman's his influence. Of course, I like how Superman's his influence. And, yeah, not much else to say. I have no idea what happened, folks. My camera just stopped. But anyway, I think Monster Trunk was, Truck was really fun and imaginative. But then you start to wonder, like, is he hallucinating when he's using it? It's... Yeah, I mean, that's... And then you have Summer, who I kind of find interesting, this bad girl. But again, she has a bit of a personality for her. We got a bit of a threat going on. And I like how there's an actual operator. And you have the, whoever this Thunderbolt Club is. Again, interesting. It's Sam Humphreys really knew what he was doing with this one. And given how this is also the guy who worked on Green Lanterns, kind of shows that, yeah, he's a very good writer. And can't wait to see what happens next is all I can say. And, yeah. This is definitely the best one. There was nothing overtly political or whatever about it. Miguel's just a simple kid. Simple kid who uh, just happens to be Hispanic, it looks like, but doesn't seem to be driving anything about his character at all. I like it. Can't wait for more. So, I'll be reviewing this more often, all right? But uh, tune in uh, tomorrow or next time as I be doing Shazam! Number four. Wait, was it number four? Yep, number four. Let's see. And then after that, I'll get back to the GoBots and wrap that whole thing up. So until then, I'll catch you later.